are not very far away from the dam at this point. A well-deserved opportunity to enjoy the natural environment presents itself. But it must be remembered that this is a man-made reservoir and not a natural lake, although it will naturally attract wildlife. The two leets, the earlier Plymouth Leet and the later Devonport Leet, were supplying Plymouth with its domestic water supply. However, open ditches meant that all sorts of creatures could and did use it. It wasn't particularly hygienic. Another problem was water loss through seepage and leaks. Droughts caused slower rates of water flow, which meant that usage had to be restricted, a sort of 19th century hosepipe ban. The answer had to be a reservoir and pipes watered to Plymouth. Once this site was chosen and by parliamentary consent, the work began. Alas, initial boring showed that the location for the dam was geologically unsound. The Plymouth Corporation Act of 1893 allowed recommencement of the dam further downstream in this location, in the Meavy Gorge. The added bonus was that the new location would mean that the reservoir would hold more water. While the construction took place, the Plymouth Leak needed to continue to flow, as well as the Meavy. The pipe work was completed in 1894, taking the leap water to a service reservoir at Roborough through a 25-inch pipe. A quarry was created in the basin, and the foundations were dug 15 feet into the ground. The dam was constructed of granite rock set in concrete, and the outside of the dam was faced in carefully cut granite blocks. In the summer of 1898, the dam was completed. The following 16 years saw good service. It was during the outbreak of World War I that some political changes took place. In 1914, the three neighbouring independent towns, the County Borough of Plymouth, Devonport and the urban district of East Stonehouse, were merged to form one single county borough of Plymouth. In 1917, Plymouth acquired the water capture basin in which Baratour sits. Boundary stones mark PCWW, or the Plymouth City Water Works, were erected around the outside of the basin. All farmland within the basin was acquired and a large area of coniferous forest was planted. You can see over this side that it's deciduous wood, bereft of its leaves at the moment because we're early in the year. Over there you can see a large plantation of coniferous woods, whereas over on that side you can see a mixture of coniferous and deciduous wood. They've planted lots of trees. A big thumbs up for that one. Alas, where you have stands monoculture of coniferous, fast-growing coniferous wood, it creates a, an acid runoff, which is problematic. Now you'll find around Burrator a vast amount of logging going on, lots of clear felling, and they're replacing the coniferous wood with a mixture of coniferous and deciduous wood. From 1923 to 1928, the dam was raised by 10 feet, increasing the capacity of the reservoir from 668 million gallons to 1,026 million gallons, nearly double the original capacity. The top of the dam created a roadway. While this was cut off, a suspension bridge was constructed across the reservoir close to the dam and to allow access to the other side. The base on which the pillars stood can still be seen, but little evidence of the bridge footings on the other side can be seen now.
there is another dam constructed not too far away. This earth dam was constructed to prevent sheep store and the village of Mevi being flooded. Some strengthening work has had to be done to remedy the weaknesses that were detected. Below the main dam is the remains of Plymouth Leet, sometimes known as Drake's Leet. However, as Drake wasn't directly involved initially, it is perhaps not an accurate name for the Leet. It was possible that it was named after him owing to his fame. He had circumnavigated the globe, returning as a rich man. He was knighted, and he had bought Buckland Abbey. Several years earlier, Hawkins had dabbled with the idea of bringing the water from the moor. In about 1560, Forsland, a tin miner used to making leets, was asked to survey the leet from Dartmoor to Plymouth. The idea was shelved but was revived in 1576 when the Lamplen brothers were asked to survey the leet from the Meavy to Plymouth. In 1577, Drake was about to embark on his three-year voyage around the world. We're not very far away from the dam, in fact, only about 200 metres in that direction. Down there is the River Levy, and hugging the side of the hill is what's left of Plymouth Fleet, and it's only a ditch at this point. But we're going to walk further on and I'll show you something um, that's a little bit more impressive, maybe. The scheme went to Parliament in 1584 and a committee comprising of Drake, Roth, Edgecombe and others promoted the bill through Parliament. Construction began in 1589. It seems that the town's corporation put Drake at the head of the project. The Leet was completed in 1591. For most part, it was a simple ditch. Over time, the ditch was lined with granite to improve efficiency and the water quality. So you might imagine that the water quality wasn't too good once it arrived in Plymouth. <laughs> 